Welcome to The Deciding Point, our Cracked Rackets weekly breakdown of the biggest storylines going on throughout the tennis world. It was a busy week on both the ATP and WTA Tour. We had three highlight events on the men's side, two on the women's side, and of course, another action-packed week ahead of us. Joining me to break down all of the action, as he so often does, is our Cracked Rackets do everything for father of the forehand slice, Jamie McDonald. But with that in mind, let's get to this week's episode of The Deciding Point. All right, Jamie, we're going to talk about Garbine Muguruza and Dubai and the South American clay court swing separately, but there were a ton of ATP and WTA level results for us to sift through from the past week. You look at the hard court action at the premier level. We had Daniil Medvedev earning the 10th ATP title of his career in Marseille. We also had Sarah Cerebez Tormo earning the first WTA uh, title of her career in Guadalajara. We had a Jeannie Bouchard final. Final in Guadalajara, Pierre Uzerber pulling off a ton of upsets in Marseille. The most notable performances from you over the past week were from who, Jamie? Well, you mentioned it there at the, area, uh, at the very end. Air Bear has looked really, really solid. I mean, that win over Sitsipas, what was that, a few days ago now, was mm-hmm. super impressive. And I, I think you were the one who was talking about this. But we forget, this guy's a good singles player, right? We, we know him notably for the doubles, all of the big titles he has won with his partner, Mahu. And we see the hands, we see the movement, we know he can play dubs. But, man, this guy can play singles, too. And especially you get a little home uh, home action, indoor hardcore. Guy is super dangerous. So I hope he can carry that momentum because he, he's a really fun player to watch when he's doing it right. That's a great call. He didn't just beat Tsitsipas. He took it to Tsitsipas. And what's so impressive about Pierre Uzer Bear is how his game seems to translate across surfaces, right? It's not just on hard courts where it works best, although I do agree with you. I think on the indoor hard courts is where he's going to look his best or maybe even on the grass courts. But we saw him have success on clay last year. More importantly, you know, sometimes you see doubles players in the singles draw, singles players in the doubles draw, and you're just like, these guys don't belong. Pierre Uzer Bear is just a tennis player. I could completely agree with you. He has looked phenomenal of late. Uh, you know, some of the other notable performances, that was a match Tsitsipas really could have won uh, to knock off Air Bear. He took the first set. He served for 5-4, got broken, but then ended up taking it into a breaker. You thought he was going to pull away. He wasn't able to do that, but still, uh, I agree with you. Speaks more to Air Bear. On the women's side, quickly, I'm going to kind of mesh Dubai into this as well, Jamie. It's a continuing theme. You know, last week, it was Kvitova Muguruza. This week, it was Krechakova versus Muguruza, but you see, you know, the Sabalankas, the Mertens, the Pagulas of the world continuing to make deep runs. I just think at this point, if you don't understand the parity in women's tennis, you're not following the game closely, right? It's just every week it can be a new name, regardless of where or what surface the event is or where it, what it's on. It's just, I, I feel like it's incredible, Jamie. Exactly. And I think it's a little bit different from a few years ago when, you know, you'd look at a big draw and you'd see some name and you'd be like, oh, that feels like a fluke. Right now, none of them really feel like flukes because it's like, yeah, I can legitimately back up why that makes sense. I may not have predicted it, but, you know, like Jill Teichman making deep runs, Um, you know, people who have looked good in 2020 now moving into 2021 and carrying that forward. Like you mentioned, there's just such a long list of names on on the WTA side who, I mean, it's just crazy right now. So that makes it extra fun, especially when we get to these large events because it really is a crapshoot. Anything could happen. Uh, But again, that's what makes it entertaining for us. You nailed it. It's not a fluke. All of these women are that good, right? Marie Buzkova, another semifinal for her in Guadalajara. She transferred it over. You mentioned Teichman. She finally beat Coco Goff in a quarterfinal. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've played three times already this year. You're absolutely right. It's not that it's a fluke run one week or the other. It's the fact that there are these many competitive and excellent women competing in the women's game right now. And yeah, it makes the WTA Tour a fantastic place to be uh, for tennis fans in 2021. 